In the next video, we created a map in Kernel. This map is not very interesting as there is not much interactivity. All you can do is zoom in and out, move the map around, but you can't interact with any of the layers or datasets. One thing we could do to improve interactivity is to add a layer selector so the users can choose which layers to show. Go to Map Options on the side menu and select Layer Selector. Now you can use this to change visibility of different layers. You can also enable or disable other elements on your map such as the search box or legends. More generally, you can use widgets in interactive mapping. Click the Widgets tab to add new widgets. We don't have any yet. There are four types of widgets in Kernel. If you have a time or date variable, you can use time series widgets to show a timeline or animate your map with time. Category and histogram widgets help you filter by categorical or continuous variables. Let's add one from each category. And these are all the columns in your current data sets that support the type of widgets that you choose. I will use full name, which is a straight name in the road segments layer for the category widgets. You can change the name of the widget again by using the more options menu. Because there are many straight names, the widget only shows the five biggest categories or the five streets with the most segments displayed and all the other segments are among others. When you click on one of the categories, only features of this category will be displayed. You can select multiple categories. If you enable dynamic here, the categories and counts will update when you move the map around. You go back to select all and you see as I zoom in or when I move the map, the categories update as well as the count, which is number of segments with that name. See, it's basically a filter on the fly. If the street that you're interested in is not shown here among the top five, you can search it. Okay, search by its name. So I can show all streets with Petre in their street names. Select all of them. Second page. I'm showing all the street segments with Petri in their names. You can click Unlock to deselect. Now let's add a histogram widget. Back to adding new widgets. And I use Shape Length here, which is the length of the street segment in feet. Now the widget shows both a histogram a distribution of the continuous variable and also allows you to filter, you can drag it to select a range. Okay, go clear. So similarly, you see if you enable dynamic here, the histogram also updates when the map display changes. You can change the number of buckets here. With more buckets, your histogram becomes more detailed, right? Or you can select a certain bucket and then zoom in to see a more granular distribution within that bucket. You might see there's a checkbox here, custom colors. What is that? It says it's used when auto style is applied. You can click this drop icon here. So you see now the layer that you apply the widget to is styled with all the style colors. And you can set the color options here. Okay, if I change color setting here, that will change what happens when you click that all the style here. When you disable that, it goes back to the original setting that we have for the layer, which is walkability score. So if we consider shorter blocks to be more pedestrian accessible, we can show the shortest straights in green and the longest straights in red. So we can apply this for all the style and now we have our street segments colored by the length of the block. And you can see this area is uh, the area with the shortest straight blocks. Now let's see the example of a formula widget. 
the third type. So the sidewalk column is one of my hypothetical walkability score, the three components to my composite walkability index. It's also populated with random numbers, but let's assume these are actually values representing sidewalk quality. And I want to show an average sidewalk score of my map extent. So I choose that and see the operation here. By default, it's average. And that's what I want. I want to show the mean value of walkability quality. So make sure you have dynamic enabled. And then you see the number here. Currently, all the street segments within my map extent has an average sidewalk score of 3. If I zoom in to a certain area, then this number will update. Now, this prefix suffix, if you have units, you can put it here and it will be displayed in the widget. That doesn't make sense, but I'm just using some examples here and you can use the distribution to include um, explanation of what the score means. So basically help your users understand what you're showing here. Another way of creating widgets is to just go to the layer that you want to add a widget for, okay, and go to data tab. You see all the columns are listed here and it's shown what kind of widgets you can add with each column. So you can just check one of these, like I'm going to show name, it's a widget, okay? So name is the categorical column, so it's added, ooh, right, you see what happened? Previously within my map, there are no student buildings displayed, so there are no points to be filtered by this widget. Now we have six student housing locations and five of them are shown here and you can select each of these to show only that building location. After you make changes to the map, don't forget to update the published version so your audience can see the changes. So go to publish and click update. Okay, and now let's check the map again. And now you see you have a map where you can select which layers to show and you can filter using all these widgets.